Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Won't you join me in the exploration of the rich resources of your own imagination? Modern science tells us we live in a world of waves. Beyond the atom, the electron, the ion, substance itself breaks down into waves. My voice is coming to you now on waves. And uh, that, as they say, is the long and short of it. But what about thoughts? Might not they comprise wave patterns too? Patterns that linger on after the thinkers are dead and buried. Might not that explain the empty footfall in the vacant house? The rattle of chains, now rusted and broken. And even the sound of voices long ago silenced. They'll overtake me! They'll put me in iron! And this time, they'll hang me! No, my dear, no! They can't harm you now! They're all gone! They're all turned to dust long ago! They be after me! You'd not want to see me swinging in the wind, would you? No, I wouldn't want to see that! I must have a swift, able ship! In mercy's name, help me! Help me! <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Strange Voyage of the Lady D, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Mary Jane Higby and stars Paul Hecht and Augusta Dabney. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The curious adventure that befell the Stevens family would never have happened if Ellen had had her way. But Ellen was a realist, her husband Richard a romantic. And when did realism ever hold the line against the subtle persuasions of romance? It all began during a visit to one of those cruise-ridden, sun-drenched islands in the Caribbean. A friendly family disagreement was in progress. An old story. It's been going on now for six years. It's the one at the end of the dock, Ellen. There. Isn't she beautiful? Mm -hmm. Very nice. But you promised her, Richard, no more boats. Well, not until Susie's at least 16 years old. We'll never see a buy like this again. They're practically giving you the Well, way. then there's something wrong with it. It's got dry rot. Not this ship. Come on, step aboard, Ellen. Richard, why do you start these things? You know we're not in the market for a boat. Oh, but this is such a jewel. <sighs> Wait till you see the cabin. Plenty of headroom. A beautiful galley. Can I go aboard, Chana? I want to see. Oh, all right. But just one quick look. And be careful of your dress, Susie. <laughs> Here, let me help you, Susie. There you are. <laughs> now, just look at this after deck. She's all white oak and cedar. And she's a motor sailor. You know, a lot better than an auxiliary engine. You can run just as well under power as under sail. There are two 50-gallon fuel tanks below deck. Mama, look at this kitchen down here. There's even an oven. Really? Is there an oven? <laughs> of course. The ship is a real home. Ellen, what do you say we take a short run? I have the ignition key. The guy in the boatyard office said I could take her out. No, Richard, I've had it with boats. And anyway, the question's academic. Even if we bought it, we couldn't get it back to the States. We could sail it. Are you out of your mind? It's hundreds of miles. Well, she has an enormous cruising oh. range. What, with the engine and sail? We just watch the weather predictions very carefully. Well, come on, Susie. We're going to get off now. Richard, you take the keys back to the boatyard man. And I'll get the car and bring it down as far as I can. I'll pick you up at the gate. Daddy? Yeah? I want to take a ride in it. Can I tomorrow, Daddy? Can I? Huh, can I? Huh? What, dear? Can we go both for a boat ride tomorrow? I don't know. Depends on your mother. Oh, I wish we could buy the boat. Don't you? Daddy? Don't you? Don't I what? Wish we could buy the boat. Yeah, well, that part's all taken care of. I already bought it. The only problem now is how to break the news to your mother. <laughs> Now, Ellen, 
and you have to admit, this is the life. Look at that sea. It's like glass. It's too calm. I don't like the gray mistiness that's settling over everything. I won't feel good until we sight land again. I won't be long now. We were clipping right along when we had the sails up. See, that's the advantage of a motor sailor. When the wind died, we could switch right over to power and still maintain our speed. Except for that panicky half hour when you couldn't get the engine started. Ah, just a little corrosion around the points. Bit of sandpaper fixed that. Here, Ellen, why don't you take over the wheel, huh? I want to go and look at the chart. Now, the first buoy we pick up is number 12. From there, we'll see a light. If we make it before nightfall, you can take over for a few minutes. Okay, Susie? I don't like this mist. Uh, uh, you know where we are right now? We are sailing on the Spanish main. The Spanish main? That's right. These waters were infested with pirates in the old days. Blackbeard and Calico Jack. Richard, I think there's a fog closing in. Look ahead. Yeah. Well, just hold a steady course. We'll be sighting that buoy any minute now. Uh, Susie, go below and bring up my binoculars as a good girl. The visibility's not any too good. Uh, we can't be far from port. Oh, Richard, I hope we're not running into one of those awful pea soups. Now, don't panic. Don't get Susie frightened. Get binoculars. Thanks. Can you make out anything? Well, I don't see it yet. But we will. Tell me more about the pirate. Okay. Well, Calico Jack Rackham. They call him that because of the fancy clothes he wore. He sailed with Anne Bonnie. They were girl pirates, too, you know. Girl pirates? Sure. Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed. And from all accounts, they were better at it than the men. The fog's getting awfully thick, Richard. I've never seen one roll in so fast and the sun's gone. Uh, I'll take over. No, I can hold her on course. You keep looking for that buoy. We should have been in port long ago. Well, we lost a little time trying to start the engine. Are we lost? Of course not. I think we ought to start sounding our foghorn. Not yet. Don't you want to hear what happened to Anne Bonnie? What happened to her? Well, the pirates all went to jail. They hanged poor old Calico Jack. Mary Reed was dying of a fever, and Anne Bonnie nursed her. And then, well, nobody knows just what did happen... In the morning, when the jailkeeper opened their cell, he found the body of Mary Reed. But Anne Bonnie was gone. She disappeared and was never heard of. Richard! What? Look! Look what you've done, oh, Richard, how could you? Well, what? Well, what is it? This monkey wrench is right behind the compass, Richard. <laughs> Who put that there? Who? Who was working on the engine? That wrench will have pulled that compass so far out of line... It... Heaven knows where we are now. Yeah. Sorry. I was so glad to get that motor started. Oh, oh Ellen, I'm sorry. Oh, if I ever get my feet on dry land now, again. Now, look, let's keep calm. We are not lost. Oh, no. We're still right here in the Atlantic Ocean. I'm sorry, Ellen. How I ever let you talk me into this expedition. Just, just try to keep cool. Daddy? It's all my fault. We're probably 50 miles off course. Daddy? There's a big can floating over there. What? Uh, where? There. The boy. It is. Oh, thank heaven. I'll take the wheel. I want to go right up to it. we got to be sure of that number. It should be, be 12, right? I see it. I see the number. What is it? Three. Three? No, it can't be. A three and an eight. Oh, no. That's what it is. Ellen? Susie's right. 38. That's impossible. Take the wheel again, Al. Just idle here by the buoy. There's no 38 on this chart. We're way off course. I have to go below and get the other charts. Can you still see the buoy, Susie? Sure. It's right here. Well, keep your eye on it. Don't let me drift too far away. Darling? Yeah? You're not smoking down there, are you? Good Lord, no. You know, I haven't smoked in ten years. I smell tobacco. So do I. What? Oh, well, let me get at the engine. Maybe there's a short in the wire. No, no, it's not like that. It's... It's tobacco. <laughs> Did you hear that? What? It's, it's, uh, it sounded like... Somebody laughed. Ahoy! It's a ship. Where? I don't see anything. Ahoy! Ahoy! You don't answer. 
blow the horn. Ahoy! What ship are you? The Lady D. We're off course. Can you give us our bearings? You just let over for the night. Steer north by east, a quarter east. You'll run right down the channel. Thank you. I still can't see anything. North by east, a quarter east. It was a woman. Bring the ship around. Slowly, Ellen. That's right. I hope she knows what she's talking about. And I still smell tobacco. So do I. Was she that close? Huh. Funny. I didn't see a thing. I didn't hear any motor. Maybe she's sailing. Now, Susie, how could she be? There's no wind. And she seemed to get away so fast. Alan, go as slow as you can. I'm going forward and keep a sharp watch. We don't know what we're heading into. But I've got to throttle way down. the most beautiful yet fearful tales that travelers tell is the Lorelei, the siren who sits on a rock combing her long golden hair and luring unwary boatmen to their doom. But a siren who smokes tobacco? We'll learn more of this unusual temptress when we return shortly with Act Two. Nothing so eerie as the feel of a ship gone aground. A living, pulsing body beneath your feet goes suddenly dead. Aboard the Lady D, only Susie slept that night. Ellen and Richard kept an anxious vigil, waiting to see what the dawn would bring. Where were they? How great was the damage to their boat? On the last question hung the safety, perhaps the survival of the ship and her crew. Ellen, come up on deck. You've got to see this. What, dear? Look at that sunrise. Isn't it magnificent? Oh, oh God. You're the one man alive who could run a valuable boat aground in the middle of nowhere and greet the dawn like Shelley. Mm, some sort of ship is sure to pass by. Meantime, this is a great adventure. Mm -hmm. Well, the tide runs out. That'll be an adventure. This boat's going to roll over on her side. No, she won't. She's built like a sea skip. They used to pull them right up on the beach to unload the catch. So, give us a kiss, Cassandra. <laughs> Good morning, darling. <laughs> well, I guess I better go ashore and see if I can find a water supply on, on our desert island. Is this really a desert island? I'm afraid so, sleepyhead. And your father's playing Robinson... Richard... Look. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, here comes Friday. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are it. What did he say? I think he said we're early. Er, early for what? Uh, what island is this? Campbell's Island. Campbell's Island? Yes, mistress. I am Campbell. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Campbell? I'm Richard Stevens. Uh, this is my wife. Good morning, mistress. And uh, my daughter... Welcome. Did you say we were early? Yes, yes. Usually September come before she bring a boat. Who? Oh, the lady who smoked the pipe. A pipe? Yes, a long clay pipe. You did not see her. No. We smelled her pipe. Is Campbell's Island... I, I mean, is there a town here? Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Campbell, the only man here. Oh, we missed the harbor channel. Campbell's Island. I have no harbor. The lady said there was a channel. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes she say that. You mean she lied to us? Baby, you want your boat. Your boat, she nice. Oh, well, won't you come aboard? Thank you, sir. Uh, can I... Can I give you a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you, mistress. Oh. 
Your wheel. Yeah, I like a good old-fashioned wheel to steer with. You pay a lot for that. Oh, the Goomba. Well, the ship's well-equipped. This is the ship belt. Ross, must go steer. You have a radio? Uh, just a receiving set. Now, uh, Mr. Campbell, about getting off the beach. <laughs> you stuck fast, man. Well, if you have a boat and a tow line at high tide. No, man. My motor too small. Just a little outboard. I sail to the other island. Well, there are other islands near? It ours to sail then. Uh, could they send out a workboat from another island? Maybe. We have to fetch them. No wireless on Combo's Island. You mean go in your little sailboat? Oh, no, mistress. You and the child must stay here. My boat is small. If I try to keep a big boat, she take it. You mean the lady with the pipe? Well, not. She has a boat. She ought to be willing to... No, man. Mistress Bonnie have no boat. That's the trouble. She look for a boat. All the time she look. Bonnie. Did you say Bonnie? I am Bonnie. Do you know about her? Yes, but she died 200 years ago. That's what they say. Do you mean that we were talking to a... A girl? Of course not, Susie. There are no such things. I talked to a ghost. I talked to a Susie, ghost. Susie, sensible. There are no such things as a ghost. <laughs> Your boat is stuck fast on Combo's Island. But true? Why, yes, but... If the ghost, she don't bring you. How do you think you got here? <laughs> <laughs> Campbell and Susie are certainly getting along together. Look at them striding ahead of us. She's striding. She's trotting. What a big, powerful man he is. And his skin, like ebony. Uh, how old do you think he is? Well, I don't know. Forty? Well, I'm eager to see his boat. Listen, I hate to think of you starting out all alone with him. I have to go for help. But why can't he go by himself? Uh, I don't know. He doesn't seem willing to do that. Did you notice the way he examined our boat equipment? Yeah, like he was taking inventory. Yeah, but what do they call those people who lure ships to their doom by putting out beacon lights? Wreckers. Yeah. You think he's a wrecker? The thought crossed my mind. But we did hear a woman's voice. Now, look, there could be two explanations for that. Either there is a woman on this island in spite of what Campbell says, or, or he's a ventriloquist. Look. Look, Ellen, look down there. Why, it's a castle. A ruin. A burnt-out ruin. How in the world on this desert island? I know what that is. I've seen those burnt mansions before. This was a plantation in the slave days. Oh. When the slaves rebelled, they burned the house to the ground. Half of it is still standing. Yeah. And now the house and the island have found a new master. <laughs> Come. You like a drink before lunch? Lunch? Yes, yes. I give you a nice lunch. You like foie gras, caviar, <laughs> potty shrimp, any kind of wine? Nothing, thank a you. A vodka Collins will be just fine. Vodka Collins. Soon come back. Mama, Mr. Campbell says there's an ice cold spring behind the house and coconuts and pineapples and... Hey, look in the corner there. Cast bronze... And enormous. A propeller. That's worth a lot of money. And that wheel, it's huge. It must have come off a schooner. What does it say on this plate, Mama? Duchess of the Caribbees. This one says, Rita Cho. This one is Morning Star at SS. What's this word? The SS Odyssey. Oh, Richard. Yeah. All of ships. Don't wreckers usually murder their victims? Now, Ellen, we don't know that he's a wrecker. You like my house? Oh, oh it's lovely. I have good life, man, since I learned to get along with Mistress Bonnie. Uh, how did you come here in the first place, uh, Mr. Campbell? I was fisherman, hard work, no money. One night, she take my boat. I swim to this island. 
I see all these rich things here on the beach. So I come back in a new boat. She put that one on the devil's thumb. What's the devil's thumb? Big rock. The devil, he put his thumb up at low tide. Then he pull it down at high tide. Then up at low tide. He hide it again just below the water. Along come a sailor man. Up come the thumb. Right through the bottom of the boat. <laughs> the devil... I think he's a good friend of Mistress Bonnie. Uh, uh, Mr. Campbell, you say it'll take all day to get to the nearest boat yard? In my boat. But they have work boat. Uh -huh. Much quicker with power. They return here with you in two, three hours. And then uh, can we start tomorrow morning? Yes, man. Five o'clock to catch the tide. I have things to sell very dear. Better than fish. Oh, yes, yes. Better than fish. Oh, oh. oh, it feels good to stretch out. Oh, I'm exhausted. Oh, I was certainly glad to get back to our boat. Yeah. Oh, I'm afraid I'm too nervous to sleep, so I... Oh, I dread the thought of our separating tomorrow. Mm. Mm. When I think of you... All by yourself on the sea with that giant of a man. I'm so frightened. Why well, won't he go along to get help? That would be perfectly normal, wouldn't it? Unless, unless there's a price on his head. Richard? Richard? Oh, Richard, are you... S Richard? Oh... oh. Dear, I'll never get to sleep. She's an able ship. What? Who's that? Over the side of your head. And mine. Walk on cat feet. Who's there? <gasps> Tobacco. Aye. A good sea worthy vessel. Who's there? Who are you? Ah, good evening, lady. I'm just admiring your ship. May I come aboard? There's somebody with you. I heard you talking. Aye, but they all ran at the sound of your voice. <laughs> Men, a craven lot. Jack Rackham was the same. But Mary Reed stood beside me. We held off the king's men till our pistols were empty. And they boarded and knocked the cutlasses out of our hands. Ah, Mary died in prison, poor soul. She was with child. Ah, but that was days ago. Days? It was more than that. Perhaps. I've lost count of time. Will you join me in the fight? No, thanks. A fine, soothing thing to sit on a ship's deck and blow rings at the moon. I've never seen such perfect smoke rings. <laughs> Ghosts. Ghosts? Aye. The ghost of wedding rings. I should have worn. <laughs> Calico Jack calls it that. A captivating man was Jack with his black, gypsy, wild curls. Ah, they hanged him nonetheless. I stayed till Mary breathed her last, and then... And then? What happened? <laughs> Not all the king's men could ever find out. Good cop, what will you take for your ship? She's not for sale. Oh, come, come. I must have a ship. They'd be after me. You'd not want to see poor Annie swinging in the wind like Calico Jack would. No, I wouldn't want to see that. But they can't harm you now. They're gone. All turned to dust long ago. Don't put me in iron. No, my dear, no. I must have a ship. Listen, I have something worth hundreds of ships. I'll trade it now for this miserable little craft. What is it? Rackham and I, we sailed with Blackbeard once. Blackbeard? The same. Now, come close, lad. 
I know where Blackbeard buried his treasure. Blackbeard's treasure? The great treasure it was. The booty from three rich Spanish merchants laden with gold and silver. You have a map? A chart? No need. I know where it is. Come with me, lass. We'll slip out of the next time. Aren't you forgetting that you drove us aground last night? A good storm will set you afloat. <sighs> Campbell says the big storms don't come till September. Aye, but sometimes they do. We'll see to that. So, it's a bargain. You'll sail with me. No. No, no, I can't. You'd abandon me then, betray me. No, but, but I... I must have it. They'll overtake me in this time. They'll hang me. In Mercy's name, they'll help me. I can't. There's a great gulf between us, Anne. You're a dream, a, a figment. And when I wake up, I'll still be here, but you'll be gone. I can't help you because... Because you're nothing. You're nothing but a dream. Anne? Anne? an apparition for you. A whistling, pipe-smoking lady with a cutlass at her belt. But why did she leave so abruptly? Was she offended at being called a nothing, a figment? Well, none of us likes to hear the truth about himself, least of all a ghost. We'll follow Anne Bonny's ruthless quest for a ship when we return shortly with Act Three. A spectral lady bent on seizing a ship, or a laughing West Indian intent only on gathering up the spoils. Helen doesn't know which she fears most, as she watches the dawn stretch its rosy fingers across the uncharted island where the cruiser Lady D lies stranded in the sand. That was a damn good breakfast, Helen. I had a depressing dream last night. Oh? Well, at least I think it was a dream. <laughs> Anne Bonnie boarded the Lady D, and we had a long talk. And I felt sorry for her. She was frightened. That scared ghost, huh? That's a switch. Well, she was terrified. Oh, darling. I hate to see you go off with that awful man in that little boat. Oh, now, Ellen, dearest, <laughs> you mustn't worry. I wish we could stay together. The sea, it's so treacherous. Campbell's been sailing these waters all his life. Oh, yes. And he's lost two boats, he told us. And besides, you're going out in a tiny boat with a... With a he's not. He, he gathers salvage. That's, that's all we really know about him. Good morning. Good night. She turned now. Dime two boats. Pass me a line. I'll make you fast to our stern. Dodge. Got it. Come up on deck, Susie. Daddy's leaving. Come on, darling. Take care. I want to go, too. So do I, but we can't, darling. I don't want to stay here. Morning, Mr. Susie. Good morning. I want to go with you, Daddy, please. Now, there isn't room for us all. You and Mommy take care of each other. Don't go, Daddy. Mr. Susie, you go to my house. You can look at the books. Pretty pictures. Now, when I get into the boat with Mr. Campbell, we're going to let you free the line and cast it off. Now, see how quickly you can do it. Here I go. Hurry, cast us off. Uh, Miss Rayer. Be good now. We'll be back before you know it. Aren't you going to start the motor? No. The tide. She take us out. Then I put up the sail. Oh, darling. You're slicker. A quick shower might Not come a up. chance. <laughs> Look at the sky. No. No stormy weather. Not if Aunt Bonnie, she don't whistle up the wind. What? 
What did you say? No storm. Not if she don't whistle up the wind. She do that sometime. Yes, man. Ooh, we she do that. Long in Campbell's house, Susan. We should be getting back to the Lady D. It's still raining. Hmm. I thought it was one of those quick little tropical showers, but just look out there. The water's all ruffled. White caps. I'm hungry. Let's go back to the Lady D. We'll be soaked. I'll tell you what, let's do. Why don't I go back alone and get you wrinkled? No, John. It doesn't matter if I get hurt. I'm in my bathing No, Susan, no. You always say no. Daddy will let me. Well, you promise you'll come straight back? I promise. No loitering now. I Short to reach the gearship thing. I 
this ship. It can't just disappear like that, can it? Without leaving a trace. Of course not, darling. Mr. Wyatt here has radioed back to the boatyard. They say the authorities are sending out a helicopter. But we'll hear from it soon, and when we do, we'll go right to her. Now, this tug is faster than it looks. Oh, wait, it's terrible. Isn't there anything else we can do, Mr. Wyatt? I don't know what to say to you folks. We've been around the island several times. There's no sign of a ship. My baby. I should never have let her out of my sight. I had no idea she'd try to start the engine. Ellen, darling, don't. We'll find her. She was only gone from the house just about ten minutes. I set out right after her. I know, I know, dearest. And then when I got to the to the beach, the boat was, was out a little way from the shore. And Susie was standing on the deck crying. And the boat was just drifting away. It went around that point of land out there. And I ran to the other side of the island. But I never saw it again. Oh, no, dearest, please, don't cry. There was just nothing I could do and, until you came back in the tugboat. Uh, I know. We'll find her. I wish that man Campbell was here. He knows these waters. Why didn't he come back with you? He dropped me at the public dock and took off like a shot. The police have had him in for questioning several times. There have been too many wrecks in the last few years. But they never seem to get anything out of him. So, uh... You ran into him, too, huh? Yeah. He told us... Hey, uh, wait a minute. What, what did he call it? Uh, uh, that rock. Uh, the Devil's Thumb. Yes. The submerged rock. Yeah, do you know where it is, Mr. Wyatt? Well, there's only one I know of. A very dangerous spot. Right in the path of a swift current. And sometimes it's... Uh, well, there are shoals to very bad place. Oh, Richard. Mr. Wyatt. Uh, yes. We... Yes, of course. I know about where it lies. Now, we'll run down on it. Best to have a look. This is the tugboat Swallow calling Coastal Police Launch. Tug Swallow to Police Launch. Come in, please. Over. Police Launch to Swallow. I read you. Over. That's good. I can hardly hear you, but it doesn't matter. We've located the missing cruiser, Lady D. Over. Is the child okay? Over. Yeah, it's a miracle. The kid was alone on board. She managed to drop a small anchor onto a submerged sandbar near the Devil's Thumb. I have the boat in tow, and we're heading back to port. Over. Glad to hear it. Over. Right. Over and out. Well, Susie, you're quite a sailor. But how did you know that sandbar was there? You couldn't see it. The lady told me. The lady with the pipe. A lady? She's not a real lady. She's a ghost. A ghost? Well, it, it's hard to explain. We don't believe in such things, of course. But... She went away for a while, but when I started to cry, she came back. A ghost? I'm sure there's some perfectly natural explanation. She said to put out a long, long... Well, that was sound advice. But I don't understand. You see, Mr. Wyatt, I've been telling Susie these pirate yes, stories. And I had a very vivid dream, and she heard us talking about that. You know how impressionable children are. Excuse me. Do you smell something burning? Something... something burning? Yeah. It smells like... Um, like tobacco. Richard. Uh, Mr. Wyatt... Don't you think we better get both these boats back into harbor just as fast as we can? Well, those were the known facts of the strange voyage of the Lady D. To this day, Susie insists she talked to a ghost. Ellen believes it was a startling example of the power of the imagination. And Richard has been reading up on the dematerialized nature of modern physics. And he wonders if somewhere in space there exists a vast psychological viewing screen picking up impressions from other times and through which it was the fate of the Lady D to pass. I'll be back shortly. Now 
a brief footnote to the story you've just heard. Among seafaring men, there is a belief, as ancient as the art of navigation itself, that when the wind dies down, a sailor may bring it to life again by the simple act of whistling. The mystery concerning the fate of Anne Bonny, as well as her life of piracy with Calico Jack, Mary Reed, and the nefarious Blackbeard, is not legend. It is thoroughly documented historical fact. Our cast included Augusta Dabney, Paul Hecht, Corinne Orr, Margaret Barker, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. (laughs) 